Thank you, Jesus. Can we praise him for a while? Is your God. You're wonderful. You're mighty. You're precious. Father, help us today. Without you, we can do nothing. Without you, we can rest in your presence. Father, thank you for teaching all of us. Lord, 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 that people of Charis are blessed. I will tell you why I'm saying this. I even told Mama, I even told Andres, I saw a dream that has frightened me. I used to tell Mama that I don't know what is fear because I didn't want to practice it or I don't want to sense it. But this frightened me a lot. In that dream, I'm trying to tell you, maybe it's a dream or a vision, but it was real. I saw, and listen to this, I'm telling you this, I don't know what will happen, but I know Jesus is coming back. On the side of the east, if you can see where the sun, sometimes when it's 10 o'clock, where the sun is when it's 10 o'clock, I saw letters that were written. And I heard, these letters are written in Hebrew. So I could not read those letters. Is then I heard a voice speaking in anger and also frightening, saying, I have done everything for these people. And when I started to look, I started to be afraid. And, then, and I saw people, I, I kneeled down. Where I was, I was with my wife. We were forced to go down on the knees Everybody was standing. And then, and I heard the voice say, I want to show you that I've done everything. And there were other people who were commenting behind. And that voice was frightening me. I've never heard a voice that frightened like that. And then, but was speaking in a Hebrew or like Arabian, but I could hear in my ears what is the meaning of that. And the meaning it was coming to me like English. But I could hear the voice here. You know, it's yeah, something like that. And I hear the meaning, the everything. And the letters that were written there. But I wanted to read the letters. I was frightened a lot. I'm just saying this, not to frighten you. God is, is God of love. Amen. Amen. Uh, I'm just saying that truly God is doing everything for us. And when I was still watching, I heard that voice says, watch on the time of, let me show you, I said, let me show you on the time of Moses. From there, everybody was standing, we as we were kneeling down, we were taken under the soil, where we come from. You can't believe what I'm saying. All of us, I began to see that all of us, we are dust. And uh, to my surprise, I'm under there, but I can still see what is happening. Let me show you what I've done by the time of Moses. When I was down there, my spirit was alive, but I could still see, but I was underground. I was beginning to see, oh, I didn't know my body is soil. And then also, everybody here was not there. And then when I look around, I began to see what God was done by the time of Moses. And myself, I was just saying, oh God, revive us. Please forgive us. Forgive us. Forgive everyone. And I heard that voice say, 
look what I have done by the time of the prophets. Oh, you know, I thought it would come out, but you know, by the time of prophet, you're not existing. It's before you are created, so already there, I could feel the pressure of the soil was not different with my body. I mean, I could feel there, but on the other side, I didn't question why I could still see when I was down there. But I heard the voice say, now is the time of the rapture. But look at these people. I was shocked. So I was, found myself outside now. And with mama following you, we are walking by the knees with the hands like this. And then I said to this man who was close, did you hear this voice? And that man said, oh, we are not afraid of the voice. When I look at him, he was holding a beer. And I said, we know this voice. And he was still holding a beer. And then I could see that truly God has done everything for all of us. And then later, I saw that man going straight to where he was going. And I saw ourselves turning to the place where we are supposed to go. So I don't know. We must always be ready for God. Amen. Amen. So that's the vision. It ends there. But the voice was really frightening. I don't know what will happen if we are not ready for God. So we won't even tolerate to hear Jesus Christ speaking by the last day. It will be judgment for us. God has done everything. So I was looking at Prophet Andres, taken from playing organ, bring here and prophesy people. He, God has done everything. I was looking at people when we told them, God want to raise prophets. I was looking at everything. And I was looking at everything. Even what God is trying to say, can you see? These people are not what people they think they are. People are still following. God has done everything. Everything to show us that there is not, nothing hidden. When you are hearing that, I'm fornicating, but you are my follower. I mean, you are not even trying to check me. God has done all to tell us that this, where are you following? What are you doing? Who is this one? What do you want God to do again? What do you want God to do again? In uh, 2020, in the night, I show you an example here. I just show you an example. I said, look here, I brought people away in front. And I tried to show them. I say, can you see? I called to, I pray for this person. When this person now stands, he takes the mind and says, can you see, this one is not a man of God. Follow me. Look what is happening. So God has done everything. I will teach you a message that will help us not to have fear, but to have confidence in the Lord. That's what we need today. Amen. Amen. Are you happy about that? Amen. Let's leave all those stories. I just wanted to give you introduction. So this message will help us today. Let's open the book of Matthew 24, from verse 3. We'll read from verse 3. We'll read 10 verses there from verse 3. While Jesus was seated on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, when will this destruction of the temple takes place? Take place. Destruction of the temple take place. And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, Be careful that no man or no one or no man misleads you, deceiving you and leading you in error. For many will come in my name 
misusing it, appropriating the strength of the name which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah and the Anointed, and they will mislead many. You will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened for those things must take place. But that is not yet the end of the age. For nation will rise against nation and the kingdom against kingdom and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. But all these things are merely the beginning of birth pangs of the intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented trouble. They will hand you over to endure tribulation and will put you to death and you'll be hated by all nations because of my name. At that time, many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors uh, and will hate one another. And many false prophets will appear and mislead many. Because of lawlessness, it is increased. The love of most people will grow cold. But the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. Let, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this word. In Jesus' name, amen. The first thing that we need to check today is the question of the disciples and the answer that our Lord Jesus Christ gave. But the answer that, uh, that answer gave us a message of today. If we can look at verse 12, it says, because lawlessness is increased, the love of most people will grow cold. The message today is love others or love everyone. Love everyone. Love everyone. The first thing is we are taught in verse 3 that there will be people who will come to deceive us. In verse 3 there. If you can see it says they ask him the question and then he talked about the temple and they were talking about when this temple will be destroyed there will be deceivers in verse 3 that will show us the temple will be destroyed if we can have a, a revelation of understand that the temple will be destroyed one day Whatever we are doing on earth will come to an end one day. We'll be always ready. That is not what we build on earth. That it will stay forever. And Jesus, when he answered that, he says, verse 4, he says, be careful. Can you see that? He's talking about the issue of this temple. Be careful that a man must not mislead you. Because, you see, he said, many will come in my name. Maybe they build other temples. Others will come in my name. And they do something and people will follow them. So the first thing that if we want to love everyone, we must be able to check everyone. If we want to love everyone, we must be able to check everyone and not to trust everyone. Not to trust anyone. Let's check not to trust because we can be deceived and this can affect our love for others. For example, today many of us we have trusted people that has hurt us and then we cannot trust again. So, if truly 
That is the case. Number two, the preachers also must not be trusted. The preachers. Here Jesus emphasized that those who will come in my name, they will say, I'm Christ, I'm anointed. Also, they must not be trusted. Because if the Bible says many will come in my name, it means few will be the real ones. So, if now you want to love everyone, if you trust, you'll connect your heart with them. And then now, when they deceive you, you lose all, you'll be affected. What brings you to, to deception is trust. What makes you to be deceived is what? Is trust without checking. And two things happen when you are deceived. Two things. You, you will feel betrayal. You will be offended. Also you will be offended. So you must be careful that people must not offend you. If you trust the wrong people, they have to betray or they offend you. So therefore, they are, you are playing with your love. Be careful that you don't play with your love. So you must love others and give them a space that they must do their abilities. Amen. If you believe, say amen. amen. Okay. The third thing, it shows that bad things will happen in the world. There will be earthquakes, there will be that, but they must not frighten us. Those things. They must not make us to say, I, it's better, you know, I just look at my house because I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Same applies to pestilences like what has happened to us here in South Africa or all over the world. Corona. You know, the love of loving others was tested. So when bad things happen, unto the world will be tested if we still love or not. And the first thing is there. There will be afflictions, things like killing each other, hatred, because you are of Christ. Also, you can be affected when you find that you are in Christ and you find people are hating you because of that. Or dissociate you, to separate you, like the family, friends, whatever. We must be careful that people must not affect what we believe in negatively. And we found that these are the people we trusted that maybe they are Christians or not. So there will be afflictions, there will be killings, there will be a lot of things that people will be able to do to us. And such things will be there also to affect our love. But I just want to read that verse again, uh, verse 12, which I said uh, is where our scripture, I mean, our, our topic is coming from. Verse 12 says, because lawlessness is increased, lawless is sin, because the sin will be increased, the sin of the Christians, the sin of the preachers will be increased, and the love of most people will grow cold. And then now, the, verse 13 says, but the one who endures, enduring loving, the one who will maintain that love will be saved. Therefore, you'll be saved by still carry on loving. You'll be saved by still carry on loving. It means the situation is about to be very bad. But you'll be saved by still carry on loving. Mm. Are you see the verse that I'm talking about? It's verse 13. It says, but the one who endures and bears up under suffering to the end will be saved. Can you believe when Noah, uh, Lot, Lot, I'm talking about Lot, when Lot offer his daughters to the strangers, People were coming to attack strangers. And still, he offered his daughters to the strangers, to the people who never came to marry. 
how he loved strangers. And he offered also his daughter to other strangers. Can you just look at the love there? There will be a time whereby our love will be checked and we found that, you know, truly we are not Christians. There will be a time where our love walk of loving others will be checked and you find that what we are saying when we say we are Christians, we found we are not. So we need to be very careful. In Romans 5, verse 5, it says what? Can you just read that verse, Mama? You don't find it? Let me read for you. Romans 5 verse 5, it says, um, Such hope in God's promises never disappoint us because God's love has been abundantly poured out with, within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Here you can see that the justification of any believer does not go by stages. It goes by obedience. Therefore, the peace and joy from our hearts will be determined even when we are facing any situation. Any situation that comes your way because Holy Spirit is in you. Pour the heart of God in your heart. You're still going to love to obey God and carry on no matter what. So if we walk by stages and say, I have to come here so that I reach here, no, it's not a right way. God has to justify you not by stages but by obedience. And when he does that, you'll be challenged. There are times whereby, you know, your love inside your heart, yeah, will be challenged so that you must not love. So that you must not maintain that love. I don't know if you are hearing me. If you are hearing say I hear. So, know that the love that is in your heart has been poured by what? By the Holy Spirit. It's the same love of God. So, do not think God will justify you to carry on loving everyone. Even when you are being challenged, you know, your obedience of carrying on to love will make you to have joy and peace despite any challenge. So, you must understand that you cannot love your enemy until you have the love of God in you. If truly you want to love your enemies, make sure that the love that is in your heart is the love of God. Because for God to justify that you obey him, you still love people. You still carry on loving people, no matter what. It's when the love of God is in your heart. And that love of God must be poured by what? By the Holy Spirit. That's the scripture saying that. It says what? Let me see it again. Read it again. It says, we have hope in God, what? It's promises. And they never disappoint us. And because God's love has been abundantly poured out with, within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us, I still carry on moving by obedience towards the promises. Not by stages. As long as I've been cherished, nothing is happening. No, 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 no. Not by stage, stages. Someone testified yesterday, what is happening? Why God promised me and nothing is happening? No. That cannot stop you to love other people. If you believe, say amen. amen. If truly you are called to love other people and there's a love of God in you, know that you are still going to be challenged if you love like God. 
you have to be challenged if you love others like the way God loved his people. The Bible is talking about he brings rain even to the evil people. So you can't love. Love is not as easy as you can do that naturally. You need Holy Spirit to pour the love of God in you. Amen. And if you can be able to do that, you'll find that those who offend you, they cannot affect your obedience in the Lord. You are still going to move forward loving them, loving God, carrying on doing what God is saying. Amen. Amen. In Philippians 2, we can read verse 3. Philippians 2. It's not easy to love without the Holy Spirit. It's not easy. Just read verse 3. Bible. Do nothing from selfish or empty conceit mm. through factional motives or strife, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regard others as more important than yourselves. I want to tell you that love makes you beautiful. I, I, I've seen that. Love makes you beautiful. And I'll give you an example. I have not seen a man who loves his wife that will remain ugly. I'm just giving you an example. I've seen that by me. I, I've just seen that by me. Because, you know, since from the beginning when I loved my wife, there was a time whereby, I will tell you this thing, I became very white in complexion. And people, people began to say, what is happening with Pastor? I'm sure he's bleaching. No, it was love. It was love. I will tell you why. When you love your wife, sometimes you go and check what she's running short of. The moment, you don't know, you don't know that the people you, you, you don't love, they're the ones who kill you. The people you don't love, they're the ones who kill you. And when you love someone, there's something you receive from that particular person. It might not be spiritual or physical, but there is something. You become more better by allowing others to be better than you. When you love other people, you become more better. In other, listen, there is no society that if that society, you, you are fighting it, it will destroy you. But the moment when you take care of that society, it makes you more better. If you love people around you, they make you better. Amen. Amen. So regard these people more better than you. You will, you will find yourself. Do you know what we are doing now? We are always selfish. Self-centered. If you ever find you are staying with your wife, I'm just giving you an example. But, I mean, you question your wife, what is she wearing? Have you ever find, let's take she wear Bermuda. And you do like this. I'm just giving you an example. Because that's what makes, that's what makes some people ugly. Because how you reflect to what other people are doing affects you also negatively. If you love them, you always wear a smile. You always become handsome and beautiful. I don't know if you're hearing me. Tell you, everybody says, the reflection of your face shows how far you love people. Many people today, because of hating others, they end up, you know, blocking others. You find that the wife, I'm just giving an example by the wife. I want to tell you, wherever you go, your brother is your brother, is your wife, is your sister. The wife have to wear something that reached there. 
The wife will have to wear like this, like there. And yourself, you are wearing suit, you are in front, like that. And you just say, come on. This morning, I was speaking with my wife. I said, always I complain by time. But my wife from yesterday, you can't believe. She'll be saying, she wants to bring this shirt. He said, no, this one is not good. She wants to bring this one from yesterday. In the morning, I was asleep in the morning. She woke up in the morning. But the first thing that I wake up, when I finish everything, and then now I wear my suit like this, I said, are you finished? Eh? Time is going. But she has been there. She has been there because love makes you to be there for someone to look at the interests of others than yourself. I don't know if you're hearing this. Check yourself how many people you love this way. Check yourself how many people. Let's read that verse again, Mama. Verse 2. It says what? Make my joy complete by being of the same mind, having the same love towards one another, knit together in spirit, intent on one purpose, and living a life that reflects your faith and spreads the gospel, the good news, regarding salvation through faith in Christ. Carry on reading. Do nothing from selfishness or empty conceit uh -huh. through fictional motives or strife, but with an attitude of humility, being neither arrogant nor self-righteous, regarding others or as more important than yourselves. You hear that? Regarding others as more important than yourself. Have you ever loved others like that? Where you regard others as more important than yourself. Have you ever loved someone like that? If, if we reach there, there will be no competition. There will be issue of complimenting one another. If we reach that level, amen. Can we just carry on reading, Mama? Verse uh, 4. Do not merely look out for your own personal interest, but also for the interest of others. Mm. Have uh -huh. this same attitude in yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus. Look to him as your example in selfless humility. Can you hear what is humility? Humility is when you wish others to be better than you. Humility is when you can be able to save others with love, without looking at yourself. That is humility. You save others without looking at yourself. What kind of pain are you feeling when you are trying to save? Because you love them, you want to take them out. You are doing your best to remove them from where they are. Your interest is happening, especially in marriages that I wanted to tell you, especially you ladies who are married. You know, don't say now after you are married and say the mother of, you know, of your husband, she's a witch. Don't say something like that. Your mother, she's an angel. The mother of your, she's a witch. This is what Satan is affecting us. It shows that we are lacking love. If we, if me and mama, we are going to buy grocery to her mom, and you don't have a, mama doesn't have a problem. Now when we go to buy grocery to my mom, mama, she's having a problem. There's a lack of love. There is a lack of love. You must check where you complain when you are looking at the issue of interest of others. I mean, if now this Mama Zala, Baba Zala, let's call it Baba Zala, the father of your husband, the, the mother of your husband started to be a witch, it means you marry a witch. And what about you? Even you are a witch, because you are supposed to be one with your husband. 
So there are things that we can develop that we are seeing in our eyes to blindfold us so that we end up lacking love. When, when devil wants to make us not to be complete, he wants us to judge people. And we don't look at their interest now. We look at what we are perceiving. And this also affects us. Because we will stay in sin. Why? Because we don't want those people. Have you ever find that uh, sometimes you are praying, nothing is happening. Check how you love people. If there are some people you feel you cannot associate with them, you don't love them. Listen, I understand that association is not love. But if there are some people that you don't love them and you don't want to associate with them, they might be the ones who are carrying your blessing. Check your love there and begin to change yourself and, and repent and pray for them. If you believe, say amen. I felt I'll be very, very, very slow when I'm explaining this to you. Because I found that many sins we are doing is because we are lacking love. Many things that we are doing, many wrongs, we do them because we lack love. But if we love in fullness, if we just love everyone, we won't hurt anyone. You know, me, I love my children. I love my children, but there's something that I always tell my son, he can tell you. I always tell him, I say, you know, you. I'll say, Terry, you know, you know Tendo loves you so much. You know Andres loves you so much. I'll always tell him. <clears throat> One day I call him, I say, do you know I love you so much? Because love must be expressed. I don't know if you're hearing that. I say, Sometimes, when you are living your life, you'll feel like there are people who don't love you. And now, if we can express it, now you end up identify that if you are doing like this, it means it's you, it's not them. Because you can still have some wrong characters and you blame your weakness to others. You can still find yourself that you are, you are lacking love and you, you blame, you know, that weakness to others. You are failing to love others because of your weakness and you are looking, you are searching for other people's weakness and it's not there. It is you. Because what you need to do, you need to find your weakness. Amen. Amen. What makes you to look at the interest of yourself than others? Let's open the scripture. We carry on. Let's read Matthew 19. And we read verse 16. Matthew 19, 16 to 22. This is a great lesson to all of us. Ask your neighbor, do you love everyone? Or you love those who give you money? If we read verse 16, it says, And someone came to him and said, Teacher, what is a surely good thing shall I do to obtain life, eternal life? That is eternal salvation in Messiah kingdom. 17, Jesus answered, Why are you asking me about what is a social good? good. There is only one who is actually good. But if you wish to enter into eternal life, keep the commandments. Are you there? Verse 18, he said to Jesus, which commandments? And Jesus answered, you shall not commit murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony. Honor your father and your mother. 
and love your neighbor as yourself. That is and selfishly seek the best or higher good for others. And the young man said to him, I have kept all these things from my youth. What do I still lack? 21, Jesus answered him, If you wish to be perfect, that is, have the spiritual maturity that accompanies godly character with no moral or ethical defenses, go and sell what you have and give the money to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Uh, believing and trust me and walking the same path that I've walked. But when the young man, verse 22, had this, he left grieving, distressed, for he owned much property and had many possessions which he treasured more than his relationship with God. And Jesus said to his disciple, I assured you and most solemnly say to you, it is difficult of a rich man who clings, who clings to possession and stature as a security to enter the kingdom of God. Amen. Okay, here I just want to show you some things. Uh, when I was reading about this man, I found that already this young man was saying he followed all the rules and then whereas he was not in the kingdom. Already he declared that he was not in the kingdom because the first thing he said, uh, how can he do that? How can he enter the kingdom? He has done everything outside, but inside he has not done anything. Because remember, here, to him, it was a test of love. To him, Jesus here was testing him if he loved others. He said that, yes, he had followed all the commandments, including loving others. And Jesus, to prove that he was not loving others, he said, he must go and sell everything and come and follow me. So the Bible says it was difficult for him to do that. And already Jesus showed that this man was not in the kingdom. He wanted to be in the kingdom, but outside, according to all these laws, he was like, he's in the kingdom. But himself, he knew that he's not. That is why he says, he wants to enter the kingdom. Amen. He said that, how can I do so that I enter the kingdom? And Jesus said, go and sell everything you have. But the first thing that he was told, okay, if you want to enter the kingdom, make sure that you follow all what? All the commandments. And he says, I've done all. And he says, which one is left? You could see that even the pride was there. You could just see that even the pride was there. So all the list, that, all the list of those king, uh, commandments were the activities of outside but love inside was not there. So when Jesus said, let me read that verse again. He said, uh, 22, but when the young man heard this, he left grieving. He left grieving and distress for his own much property. If truly this man loved people, he could go and do that. But the Bible says, he left grieving. Yeah, if he obeyed Christ, he was supposed to have proved that he loved people. Most of the time, uh, we must also check. Uh, you know, when I grew up, I found that. I found that the moment, and this thing is happening to everyone, to all of us. The moment you just hear that there's a king there, you will see a tar road. You know, tar road going to the key. But all other places, there's no tar road. You will just see that there's a king there. 
if you are going to the place. But the whole place. So you question that, where is this money that make that tarot to the king? You question that. But if this king was supposed to have done all the tarot even everywhere, it shows that he loved his people. If this king loved his people, why this tarot only to his house? I'm just giving you an example. If truly we love people, why we have to take offering to ourselves only here? We are being tested if truly we love others. If you believe, say amen. amen. We are being tested if you love people. In the last day, I don't know what you're going to say. Which ones did you show love? Whom did you show love? Because here you could see that our responsibility will be checked by the authority we have been given. Our responsibilities of loving others will be checked by the authority we have been given. You must never think that all people around us are happy with us. We must never think. And if we conclude that we are hypocrites, if we conclude that everybody is happy, other people are crying around us and there's no way they can, they might be fearing to lose the small thing that they might be receiving. I, I can give an example. Let me just give an example by what I'm showing here. Can we come here? Uh, can we come here, you people here? Come here. Let me show you by what I'm talking about. Come here, sir. Yes, sir. Let me bring uh, this. Stand here. Yes, stand here. Stand here. Uh, face, face, all of you. Come, pastor, come here. This pastor is here. All of you look at pastor. Come here. Look at these people. Come, mama. Uh, come and stand around pastor here. This is what is happening to all of us. I'm giving you an example. Pastor is in the center here. Can you see that? He's in the position of what? Of responsibility. Because of the authority he has been given. Uh, Pastor, can you just make a look distant so that you remove this? Yes, you remove uh, dang. Remove that dang. Look at them now. Can you just also remove that? Yes. Because I want to see your teeth. So, Pastor, because he's in the position of authority, he must not think that these people are happy when you look at them. When the Pastor look at this one, you smile. Smile. Can you all smile here? Yeah. Are they smiling? Yes. It means they are happy with you. But this one might be crying at the back there. This one might be crying. This one. Can you smile? Pastor, turn around. Stop smiling. Can you look at this one now? Can you, can you smile here? These people, if we take them aside, they will tell us that pastor is not loving them. There are some people, I want to tell you, around you, you don't need to conclude if truly you have love. If you have love, check why these people are smiling. Not all smiles are smiling. If you look at this man, look at him there. Smile. And you people here don't smile. And then you sometimes face there. So don't ever think, act like you are crying. Bring out tears. <laughs> so now, this one, can you see this one? This one, Pastor, Pastor, you are busy facing there. Face there. But this one is telling us something. This one, and do like you are looking at Pastor and look back. Look at Pastor and look back. Carry on crying. Carry on crying. Do like this. Do like this. Pastor, look this side. Smile. Smile when Pastor look at you. 
This is what is happening today. Go and sit down. If we carry on concluding that all people are happy around us, we'll be hypocrites. Let's find out how far we are loving others and look at the interests of others. That's why today you find that there's a lot of things that are happening around us. And then that's where you find some people are even afraid to talk the truth because they are trying to hide. Why? Because there's a smile when they are being looked at, but there's a cry when there's no looking. Look at the scripture we carry on. 1 John 3 verse 18 24 Read for us mama. 1 John 3 18 Little children Little children Meaning believers and dear ones. Yes. Let us not love merely in theory with word or with tongue, giving lip service to compassion. Okay, read that verse again. It's very important. Read. Little children. Little children. Let us not love merely in theory. Yes, in theory. With word or with tongue, mm. giving lip service to compassion. Mm. But in action and in truth, in practice, and insincerity because practical acts of love are more than words. Mm, carry on. By this, we will know without any doubt that we are of the truth and will assure our hearts and quite our conscience before him. Whenever our heart convicts us in guilt, for God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Nothing is hidden from him, because we are in his hands. Beloved. Amen. Amen. Can you see those two verses we have read? The first one is telling us that we have ability to show love whereas we are not practicing it. We have got ability to show love with lips, with smile. This morning I met a white lady when we were coming and she was holding newspaper like this, selling like this. And this thing I've been seeing it several places. There are some people when they smile, you can't see their teeth. She just said, like that. And me, before, I used to end up finding myself laughing. One day I said, ah, what am I laughing? This lady is not even laughing. So today when I was coming, yeah, I saw a lady doing the same thing, but old, she's a white lady. She's able to stretch her mouth like, like the mouth was like a, uh, I don't know, banana like, like this, like that. And then to extend that, you will think the teeth will come out, but the teeth are not coming out. And then I said, this is the smile that the Bible now is talking about. Amen. We are, people are able to show that they love. They've got ability. We all have ability, but deep down, there is nothing. And here, the Bible says that God, if he can convict us, because he knows our hearts, we are before God that he knows that you are not loving. We are before God that he is aware of your actions. Can you just read that verse again, Mama, the, the second verse there, verse 19. <coughs> it says what? Um, by this we will know without yes. any doubt uh -huh. that we are of the, of the truth mm. and will assure our heart and quiet our conscience before him. So when we start to love, we clear our conscience 
and we develop confidence even to stand before God. There's nothing to hide. Mm. Love makes you not to hide anything. Love makes you not to hide. When you love someone, you cannot suspect this person will fight you tomorrow. And there's nothing to hide to that particular person. Amen. So here you could see that the Bible says we, we can open our secrets because of love. We can reveal our hearts because of love. When we love people, we cannot fight them. When, when we love each other, we will never fight each other. So read that verse. I want everyone to hear that verse. Verse 19. It says what? By this, uh -huh. we will know without any doubt uh. that we are of the truth mm. and will assure our heart and quiet our conscience before him. We will be excited when people fight us because we have a stand with God. We will even love those who are cursing us because of the confidence we have. Listen to this. If you love people, don't curse them. Don't say back to sender. Don't pray bad prayers. And it's only God. So if you can read Second Chronicles, especially verse 17. It talks about the battle belongs to God. You just love. You just love. If you love people, you won't fight them. God will fight for you. Amen. If you love people, if God wants to take care of them, do it. And God will take care of you. Love, it is the first gift we have. If we are able to practice it, put us to, it put us to the position of our God. Where God can fight for us. If you believe, say amen. Amen. Can we read verse 20? Whenever our heart convicts us uh -huh. in guilt, yes. for God is greater than our heart, and he knows all things. Nothing is hidden from him because we are his hands. This is the time, uh, especially these last years, uh, you know, this is the time that we need, when we love people, must tell them the truth. Let's tell them the truth. Because God is aware of our hearts. I believe after this service, you are listening to my voice. Can we tell each other the truth? Sometimes it's good to go to your husband and say, Baba, I'm in Angia Shang. It's good. Baba is I've been I've been crazy for many years, you don't know. Sometimes... It's very good for you to be open up. Have you ever find that uh, you, you are hiding for each other for many years? Think about before God when you reached there and, and for many years you are married and God says, you don't know your wife, you don't know your husband. And you find you have stayed together for many years. That to know each other with love and help each other on the road and God is going to help you. There are many things that we are hiding for each other. And whereas God is aware of our hearts. This is the time that we need to reveal each other's hearts. After this service, go and speak the truth. Go and speak the truth. I was sitting with another young man here that I call him, he must come back. I said, this man, did he tell you that he doesn't believe in the prophets? I was telling this lady. She, she was like shocked. Because I'm sure when the prophet prophesied, he stood up and said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But she doesn't believe. There's a lot of truth that we don't know for each other. And we cannot help each other. Amen. But if we start to know each other, we can help each other very well. If you believe, say amen. amen. Read, read uh, 21 and 22. Beloved, uh -huh. if our hearts does not convict us hmm. of guilt... We have confidence, meaning complete assurance and boldness before God. And we receive from him whatever we ask 
because we carefully and consistently keep his commandments and do the things that are pleasing in his sight, habitually seeking to follow his plan for us. Amen. Truly, if you love people, you will love God Amen. and you will seek God every day. Amen. If you want to see that the love is going away from you, check how far you seek God about your life Amen. and the life of other people. If you love people, you will seek God. Amen. And listen to this. There are many things that will come your way to challenge you. There are many things that will make you to stop seeking God. But if truly you love God, you will start and love people. Everything that you do, you'll be seeking God for other people and seeking God for yourself. Seeking God shows you love people. Amen. Seeking God. But if you use your own plans, automatically you are going to be a curse for other people. Read the last verse, Mama. 24. The one who habitually keep his commandments, obeying his word, and following his precepts, abides and remain in him, and he in him. By this we know and have the proof that he really abides in us by the spiritual by the spirit whom he has given us as a gift. Already I was telling you that if you love people, you are standing where God is standing. Already I was telling you that. You are just standing where God is standing. If you love people. And if you carry on all the time loving people like that, you, have, you receive confidence that when you pray, you will receive something. Amen. You, you are able, I believe this is what happened to David when he saw Goliath and he looked at the people of Israel who were the army, who were failing. This statement was, what about this, this uncircumcised Philistine against the army of God? He was beginning to look at the army of God and love his God and look at his people and say, this one cannot curse this one. And gain confidence that he was able to use the name of God and get answers. The answers will never come to the people who don't have love. Matthew 5, verse 43 to 48. I'm about to close, but I wanted to speak slow, just like that. Can you just read that verse very fast? Matthew 5, 43 to 48. I want you to look at your love for others. You have heard that it was said, yes. you shall love your neighbor, meaning fellow men, and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love that is unselfish, I selfishly seek the best or higher good for your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may show yourselves to be the children of your father who is in heaven. For he makes his son rise on those who are evil and on those who are good and makes the rain fall on the righteous, meaning those who are morally upright and the unrighteous, the unrepentant, those who oppose him. For if you love only those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do that? And if you greet only your brothers, wishing them God's blessing and peace, what more than others and you doing? Do not even the Gentiles who do not know the Lord do that. You, therefore, will be perfect, 
growing into spiritually mature, spiritual maturity both in mind and character actively integrating godly values into your daily life as your heavenly father is perfect there are four things that you can write them down uh, which is comprises the love that god has commanded the first one is giving giving to everyone without looking if it's your enemy or friend number 2 blessing those that curse you blessing those that curse you remember that those that curse you they are cursed so tomorrow they still going to come back and ask for help so you have to bless them blessing those that curse you it means those that curse you will be cursed and they will come back again to ask for a blessing number 3 to do good to those who hate you to do good not to fight them or to to defend yourself do not defend yourself just love to do good to them that hate you because remember those who hate you are the ones that makes god to prove them that he is with you and the last one is to pray for those who persecute you at work there there are people who are seniors who don't hate who don't love you who are persecuting you and you pray for them and this will make you perfect amen this will really make you perfect if you want to be perfect you want to be in the position where god wants you to be this will make you perfect let me just conclude this issue of loving one another by reading ruth 1 12 to 18 Ruth 1 12 to 18 If we can read there there are three things that I want to talk about what what Ruth did to Naomi uh, because she proved a faithfulness and her love to Naomi she proved The first thing that she did there if you can go and read in Ruth 1 verse 12 to 18 she knew that Naomi cannot offer any promise she knew this is some three things that happens to Ruth she knew that there is no promise and she knew that Naomi cannot offer any promise but she still love number 2 she saw Opa kissing her mother-in-law and go away in other words she saw her going away but still she clinged to her mother in law she saw opa living ruth she saw opa living naomi but she still hold naomi the last thing she said she's ready to die she can be separated by death this has silenced even naomi to tell her to go away she was able to speak it out and say i'm not going anywhere and this silence the discouragement that naomi can say and say i will be separated with you by death because of love look what happened to to ruth look what happened to ruth and she was blessed today we are still talking about it amen so listen to this you have to be tested and prove that you love you have to be tested and prove number one there was no promise that naomi can offer that's the number one thing number two she saw opa kissing her mother in law and went away where she will get promises but herself she cling to she just hold a mother in law though there was no promise this is the love that god gave her and she was able to practice that love to naomi no matter what the last thing was she was able to say it out 
when Naomi was saying, just leave me, let me go. There's nothing I can help you. Go back, you can be married there. She says, Mama, me and you will be separated by death. No matter what, I know what happened to you. I know you have lost a son, but I have lost a husband. I know I've got opportunity that I can still move on and you can be left behind, but I'm still standing with you. We must reach a level whereby when we love people, we don't expect anything from them. If your love is based on what you will receive, it's not love. If your love is based on what you receive from others, it's not love. Reach a level whereby you don't, you don't need to receive anything from them. You don't need to let them receive from you, but you don't receive anything from them. And you see God prospering you, lifting you, and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Testament says, do you love other people? This is what you can do if you want to go far. This is what you can do. Stop this thing of gossiping other people. What are you gossiping about? Is what you can fix. If there is nothing you can fix, keep quiet. It means even you, what they are experiencing, if it was on you, you will be a failure. If you reach a level where you are talking about other people, uh, where, how they are falling, how they are failing, and then what about you? It means even you, if you are failing to solve that, it means even you, you are a failure. Reach a level whereby you ask God to say, God, help these people. A problem you see, you're the one to solve it. It's not, you're not the one to talk about it. If God has to raise you, it's when you've got concern of other people. God will never raise people who don't have concern of other people. From today, you must check if you love people or not. Therefore, you might not be in the business of our Father God. If you are supposed to be in the business of our Father God, begin to check. The Bible says we must carry each other's burdens. Carry each other's burdens. Let us stop there. Let us all stand. God bless you. Today, I want us to do something that we have never done here. Because this message, I believe, you need to go. It's a very small message. You need to go home. You check yourself and recheck yourself. You must go home and check yourself and recheck yourself. Think about think about it that you might be loving people because there are benefits you are getting. The day you lose those benefits, you won't be seen anymore. The day you, you don't see those benefits, these people are your enemies. It means you are a parasite now. God has created you. You are, you are not just there because you are weak. You are there because of God's purpose. Amen. Today when you live here, you tell yourself that even if there's nothing in my hand, but I can still offer love. There are some people, they are waiting to hear you say, I love you from the heart. I love you from the heart. Sometimes I will tell you this thing that you must go and check it. If you are a Christian in your family, if you are on rest standing like this with God, you must know that any challenge that comes in your family, it's not coming to them because they are weak. It's coming to you to check your love. Any challenge that is coming, sometimes we end up pointing other people. I say, this person is weak. This one can't pray. That one, I look what is it. No, it's checking your love. Are you sure you mean what you say? Are you sure? Same applies to here in the church today. We are here in the church. You find sometimes Christians know each other, talking against each other. The question is, what about love of God in your heart? If it's not love of God in your heart, you will join them soon. This is the time that you look at your neighbor 
I need to love. I need to make it business. I'm here as a child of God. I'm not here. The last thing that I will tell you is what I'm saying now. Uh, I'm sure it was 1996 when my wife forced me to go to, to one church here. By then, I was working. 96, 95, I'm sure 96 years. She, here in, in Winnie Mandela here. The school was like, was a shake by then. We went to that church. It was number nine, if Mama remembers very well. When we reached there, I've never seen something like that in my life. Because you know when you are young and then you love Jesus, you don't believe that there can be betrayals tomorrow. When we reached that church, we found there were older people. And when we started to worship, Mama said to me, look here, pastor doesn't have food. Pastor doesn't have this. Can we do this? Can we do this? You can't believe. It's Christians, we found them there. Christians, we found them there. They came and said, no. You know, it's long we have been here. What are you doing? This pastor, we must leave him as he is. I said, these people, why are they here? This is the question that I'm having to you. How can we spend years when we come to church and we are failing to love? How can we come to church and still, because coming to church here, we are becoming one family. You can look around, you will see that your hand is needed. Amen. Lift up your hands, we ask God today. He's going to help us. I'm not saying compromise and go and ask forgiveness of what you didn't do. I'm not saying that. I'm talking about deep down in your heart, you don't need grudges today. Lift up your hands and ask God to help you, to help you to love everyone. Prayer. Pray louder. Pray louder. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Father, I need, I need your love in my heart. I need your love. Thank you, Father. Help us to show the love you have shown to us. Oh, Father, help us in Jesus' name. Amen. When you live here, many of you, you are going to be tested of the message you are hearing. Because some people, they have hurt you. Some people, they have caused you pain. Amen. Others, you cannot receive their calls. Others, you cannot receive their calls now. When you are Christian, when God starts to fight for you, you won't know. But those people have offended you, they are doing this, they know what they are facing. So don't fight back. Lift up your hands and ask Holy Spirit. Say Holy Spirit. Holy, Spirit. Holy, Father. Holy Father. Allow Holy Spirit to pour your love unto my heart. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer again. Father, allow Holy Spirit to pour your heart or to pour Holy, your love in my heart. I need love. I need love. I need love, O oh Lord. Pray that prayer. Pray that prayer. Pour, pour, pour your love in my heart. In Jesus' name. Listen to this. Like I said, temptations are coming. Test is coming. You must check. You must check. Those you don't want are the ones that God wants to use to bless you. So make sure that you say, I love them. Say, I love them. Say, I've forgiven them. 
So you'll be able to move forward. If not, you will never move forward when you're still holding grudges. I say you will never move forward when you're still holding grudges. Lift up your hands and pray for your family that you need to change today. I know someone will repent. Pray for someone. Pray for someone. The person that you thought you cannot pray for, the person that has really discouraged you, pray for that person. You will see a, a wonder. You will see a miracle. Pray for that person. There is someone you need to pray for. There is someone who has discouraged you, someone who fought you, someone who cursed you. Pray for that person. Thank you, Father. Some people are expecting us to behave the way they behave. But thank you for revealing this to us. Today, as we are praying, we will love them. And you can change them. You can change them. You can change their heart as you have changed our own. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me give you these prayer points this week. I want to see a testimony that is coming. Say, you spirit of delay in my life, today I cast you out in the name of Jesus. This is my week of a testimony. You spirit of delay in the name of Jesus. I cast you out. Can you command that spirit to leave you? Come out, you delay. Come out. I need my miracle. I need my blessing. I need my healing. As I'm speaking, you spirit of delay. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Come on, that spirit. You spirit of delay. I command you. In the name of Jesus. This is my year of bearing fruit. I command you in the name of Jesus. My finances are coming. My blessings are coming. My success are coming. In the name of Jesus. Come out. Out. Come on, that spirit. It's a generational curse. In Jesus' name. Say, you curse, you generational curse in my family. Today, as I'm praying, you cannot stop me on my way. You cannot delay me. You cannot block me. I'm different. I'm child of God. In the name of Jesus, generational curse, I break you. I break you. Break that curse. Break that curse by the anointing. Break that curse by the anointing. Break that curse by the anointing. You curse. You spirit of Satan. You curse. In the name of Jesus. I'm not part of you. I'm not part of you. I'm not part of you. Pray that prayer. You cannot delay me. You cannot stop me. You cannot slow my motion. You cannot slow my speed. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. You will come here with testimonies. And I'm expecting you in Jesus' name. So the delay is over. It's really over. Can you begin to thank God for your miracle? Thank God for your blessing. This is your week where you have to love everyone. No one can stop you. No one can block you. No one can fight you and conquer. The Lord is on your side. I said the Lord is on your side. Carry on thanking him. Th carry on blessing him in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. God bless you. Listen to this. Um, all of you, do you know what is happening to your families? And you know what you have encountered? And by praying this prayer, I expect you to come here with a great testimony. You have to be different from your family. They must know your God this year, that you are serving the living God. And God who takes care of you, who protects you, who guides you, who blesses you, in Jesus' mighty name.
God bless you. God bless you. Congratulations.